I have just completed a two week road trip circumnavigating the island of Tasmania at the bottom of Australia in my 2023 Tesla Model Y standard range. Over the two week trip we covered 4,300 kilometres and saw some amazing scenery. Hi I'm John. In this video I'll show you why the electric vehicle is perfect for navigating the rugged mountainous landscape of Tasmania. We'll look at preparation for the trip, charging along the way, and also some interesting highlights of the trip. Actually, the trip started from my hometown of Sydney. Over the course of two days, we travelled 940 kilometres down to Victoria, to the city of Geelong. This was straightforward as we used the Tesla supercharger network along the way. We stopped at Yass, Gundagai, Albury, Euroa and Geelong superchargers. We arrived early afternoon and took the opportunity to do a few hours of sightseeing in the area. We visited Bowen Heads, Torquay and Bells Beach before venturing back to the Geelong supercharger for a top up. To get across to the island of Tasmania, we travelled overnight on a ship called the Spirit of Tasmania. We drove onto the ship and were stacked in with all the other vehicles. The trip over the Bass Strait took about 10 hours and was pleasant. We slept well in the cabin. The next morning, we arrived in Devonport. Let's have a quick look at the planning that was done. You can find links to the itinerary and charging stops done as part of the planning in the description of this video. The first thing I checked was the charging infrastructure across Tasmania. I knew areas I wanted to visit but had to make sure that they weren't impacted with charging delays, which meant reviewing the DC charging options when travelling in the day. I checked PlugShare to get a rough idea of what charging options are around. I overlaid the PlugShare map with the itinerary map. All looked pretty good for access to DC fast charging on the trip. As it turns out, the Tasmanian government has invested in what is called the Electric Highway of Tasmania. I only needed to pack the Tesla Universal Mobile Charger for charging. No need to take any three-phase charging equipment. As I was staying in caravan parks, I took a 15 amp tile along with a 15 amp heavy duty extension cord. I also packed a Type 2 to Type 2 cable, which I used once. Second item to check was accommodation. The Christmas New Year break is extremely busy, hence all the accommodation for the entire trip was booked in advance, including camping spots and hotel accommodation. Where possible, I booked hotels that had charging facilities and when camping in camping grounds, I booked powered sites. It is a great convenience to wake up in the morning with the EV at 100% charge. Also, we plan to travel during the day only. The wildlife is prolific and travelling from dusk to dawn carries a high risk of hitting wildlife. During our travels, we came across all sorts of animals. Our first day in Tasmania, we travelled from Devonport down to Cradle Mountain. We stayed at a powered site in a caravan park at the edge of the Cradle Mountain National Park. We plugged into the 15 amp power using an extension cord and the Tesla UMC with a 15 amp tail. We ventured on a number of hikes in the area. We had food in the car along with the fridge. Interestingly, while hiking and with the Tesla plugged into power, we could keep the temperature in the vehicle at a reasonable level during the day using camp mode or even just setting the temperature from the Tesla app. A couple of days later, we moved on to the northwestern tip of Tasmania, to Stanley. There is a lot of sightseeing along the way and I got into the habit of loading these sightseeing locations into the navigation system at the start of each day including any potential charging stops. We got our first opportunity to use the Tasmania Electric Highway charging platform at Burnie, 
we topped up at a Charge Fox 50 kilowatt DC charger in the rain. We arrived in Stanley and did some sightseeing and checked into a motel. The next day we planned to travel down the west coast of Tasmania. We had enough charge to get us to Strawn via the highway. However, we were keen to do a bigger full itinerary where we needed to top up the charge. A short drive to Smithton, we attempted to do a charge at a Charge Fox 50 kilowatt DC charger. After a few attempts to reset the charger by pressing the emergency stop button, we finally started to charge. Just as we got the charge we needed, the charger faltered again and I could not reset it. I called Charge Fox and logged a call and updated PlugShare. The West Coast was amazing and is truly rugged. We travelled to what was called the edge of the world, which is the longest expanse of ocean in the world. The next landfall westward from this point is the coast of Argentina, which is over 20,000 kilometres away. Part of this drive was on an unsealed road. The Tesla Y had no issues with the 77 kilometres of compacted sand road. At the end of the road was a barge crossing. There was no ground clearance issues loading and unloading from the barge. Onward to Queenstown and we checked into a motel and plugged into a Charge Fox 50 kilowatt DC charger while we had dinner at the pub. The next day we headed to the Mount Field National Park. We loaded up our itinerary for the day into the navigation system and set off. On the way, the Tesla navigation was showing slow traffic at Derwent Bridge. This was a bit odd, though all became clear as we approached. We came across an echidna waddling over the bridge. Stopping at the township of Uzi, we charged at a Charge Fox 24 kilowatt charger. Also took the opportunity to have lunch out of the back of the car. Arriving at Mountfield National Park, we set up camp at an unpowered site. Not far from us was another Tesla Y from New South Wales who was setting up camp. The next day we headed off to Hobart, the capital of the state of Tasmania. We visited Mount Wellington which sits at 4,100 feet overlooking Hobart. With regenerative braking the trip down off the mountain will add 5% to our total range. It's weird to think that we'll arrive at our next destination with 5% more charge than we started with. We visited the Mona Museum and charged for free at the 11 kilowatt Tesla destination charger there. We stayed a few days at the Hobart RACV Hotel, which provided free 11 kilowatt charging during our stay. Very convenient. Next day, we headed down to Bruny Island for a visit, then to Port Arthur. This involved another ferry trip. The Tesla Y loaded and unloaded with no problems. On the way to Port Arthur, we charged at Kingston at a Charge Fox 40 kilowatt DC charger. While it was charging, we went to lunch. At Port Arthur, we stayed overnight at Stewart Bay, which provided charging. You had to provide your own Type 2 to Type 2 cable. This was the only time that I used this cable on the entire trip. On the east coast now of Tasmania, we headed to Fresnay National Park. We camped in the Coles Bay Caravan Park on a powered site and plugged into the 15 amp caravan socket. We had to use the 15 amp extension cord as the Tesla UMC 15 amp tail couldn't make the elbow bend. The scenery in this area is fantastic. The couple of days we were here, we did plenty of hikes and plenty of swimming. Leaving the caravan park at Coles Bay in the morning with 100% charge, we headed up the eastern coast to the Bay of Fires. The weather deteriorated as we did some sightseeing. We appraised this and thought we should skip camping here and go on to the city of Launceston. With the change of plans, we had to rejig accommodation and charging. We stopped at the St Helens 50kW Charge Fox charger 
and charged to 100% while we booked accommodation in Launceston and planned the trip there. We headed off to Launceston. The hotel we stayed at had charging facilities on site. The next day we did some sightseeing around Launceston. Rather than using the hotel's on-site charging, which was iced, we decided to use a nearby ChargeFox 200 kilowatt DC charger. The 20 minutes here gave us enough charge to get us up to our next destination of Devonport the next day. The Novotel Hotel at Devonport, where we're staying, says they have charging on site. When we arrived, the only parking option was valet parking. This would have been problematic to guarantee charging. Instead, we charged at a charge fox 200 metres up the road from the hotel. With an early start in the morning, we boarded the ship, the Spirit of Tasmania, for a day trip back to the Australian mainland. The car was loaded and we set sail for the mainland. We overnighted in Geelong at a nearby hotel. The next day, we travelled from Geelong to Sydney. This was 980 kilometres travelled in one day which is a long way to travel in an EV in one day. This was possible due to the highly effective Tesla supercharger network. We charged at Euroa, Albury, Gundagai, and the final charge before we arrived at home was at Goulburn at a 120 kilowatt Tesla supercharger. During our trip from Sydney down to and around Tasmania and back to Sydney, we clocked a total of 4,300 kilometres. Electricity cost was 339 Australian dollars. For me, road tripping in an EV around Tasmania was easy, cheap and a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. Join me on the next video.